Now it used to be that back in the time of the dinosaurs, when a person set out to take a photograph, specifically a not blurry one, they would actually have to send their assistant out with one end of a measuring rope and then adjust their accordion lens to the proper focal distance. I mean, okay, that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I think you guys get at what I'm driving at here. Autofocus optical systems, like all things photography related, are complex and lead to the necessity of many highly priced peripherals and accessories. Or, to put it a gentler way, there are many types of autofocus systems which can be employed depending on the necessity or manufacturer specifications. Thankfully, these multiple types can be broken down into two very simple camps, active and passive. Passive systems come in several different forms, but all operate by analyzing an image once it has been projected onto one or more sensors, then adjusting the focus based on the qualities which help it to determine subject distance or clarity. Since they only respond after an image has already been captured and then make adjustments without using environmental data, all processes they enact are considered passive. They are mostly found in two basic varieties, which are referred to as phase or contrast detection. Detection. Phase detection can be found commonly in DSLR style cameras and works by using an item called a beam splitter to direct the light from an incoming source onto two separate microsensors which are placed on opposing sides of the lens, effectively doubling the image. Doubling the image. Doubling the image. In older cameras, the user would manually have to adjust the focus until both images came in line, but today, software is utilized that matches up light intensity patterns based on peaks and valleys allowing it to make a determination about whether the subject is back or out in front of proper focus. Now, while phase detection works well on high quality cameras with interchangeable lenses, the added cost and bulk that accompanies it does not always make it a feasible option. Which by contrast brings us to, well, contrast detection, that is at least. This form of focusing works by analyzing the pixel intensity of an image on the sensor, automatically adjusting slightly past the point of highest contrast, and then back again. This is what causes that quick blur effect that you might have seen on your viewfinder before snapping a shot. But Linus, I thought you said that there were two different camps of autofocus. What about that, that active thing you mentioned before? Well, yes, I did say that, but in reality, it was actually a bit of a tease since applications of active autofocusing tend to be on the less than practical side so far. These devices work in theory by physically measuring the distance between it and the subject and operate outside the normal functions of the optic system. So two implementations of this focusing style have been seen so far. So Sonar, which uses audible clicks to determine the distance to the subject, yes, just like dolphins do, or infrared lasers like the one found on the LG G3 smartphone. These use a constantly measured distance to triangulate the space between the subject and the camera and adjust the focus quickly on demand. These systems have, uh, you know, some failings though, such as, you know, functionality ones like the inability to work when shooting something underwater or through a window, and more mundane ones as well like the annoyance of having your camera click every time you take a picture. While active focus can still be considered in the experimental stage, it seems for the most part the verdict is still out. So whether you're shooting you know, 4K footage of yourself performing reviews of the latest computer components or taking pictures of someone pushing a hoop down a dirt road with a stick, autofocus has what it takes to keep you in the clear. Speaking of annoying clicks, if you're just finding your current job is not clicking for you and you want to keep your future career prospects open, then maybe give lynda.com a try. They want to expand your mind on a variety of subjects. It's used by millions of people around the world. They've got more than three thousand courses available with topics like web development, uh, visual design, business, coding, software training like in Excel, WordPress, and Photoshop, which leads us to, oh, they also have photography courses. I mean, if you're watching this video, who knows, you might have a somewhat of an interest in photography and Photoshop. All their courses are taught by industry experts with new courses added every week. So whether you're setting, you know, you know, new goals for yourself to just, you know, improve for the sake of, you know, tying that measuring tape around your bicep and seeing a bigger number. Okay, they don't necessarily have courses on lynda.com for that. But the point is, if you're just trying to improve yourself or if you're specifically trying to go out and get a new job, lynda.com has something for everyone. And you can get a free 10-day trial by heading over to lynda.com slash techquickie and signing up 
now. You can use lynda.com on your computer, on your iPhone, on your Android device, and plans start at only $25 a month, so what are you waiting for? Speaking of things, what are you waiting for? Press like if you're not waiting to press like, or you already pressed like. Well, don't press it again if you pressed it. Press dislike if you hated this video. Leave a comment if you have suggestions for future Fastest Possibles, and as always, mash that subscribe button if you haven't already. We are getting frighteningly close to that 500,000 subscriber mark.